in March, Joseph in New York called in to ask about Arinia Pharmaceuticals. The symbol here is AUPH. It's a development stage biotech that I didn't know particularly well. So I said we'd circle back to uh, talk about it at a later date. Since this is the most interactive show on television, that's exactly what we're going to do. While Arinia stock has been stalled since March, this small cap biotech name is still up more than 250% year to date, thanks to the strength of its lead drug, Voclosporin. This is a phase three treatment for lupus nephritis. This is a nasty inflammation of the kidneys that's caused by plain old lupus, the dangerous autoimmune condition. This could be a major opportunity. For roughly 500,000 Americans suffer from lupus. 60% of them ultimately have kidney complications. There's a big group of people all over the world who suffer from this. So far, the data here has been very strong. But Arrhenia stock peaked in March when the company did a 25.6 million share secondary offering that priced at $6.75 a share. However, in the past week, it's finally gotten some momentum back. And the recent move makes me curious about why investors have gotten so confident. So let's take a closer look with Dr. Richard Glickman. He is the chairman and CEO of Arrhenia Pharmaceuticals to talk about more about how his company's doing where it's headed. Dr. Glickman, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a seat. You. Okay, um, could you please, please first tell us about this particular form of lupus, why it's such a debilitating uh, condition, and also talk about the current standard of care versus what might be out there. Oh, perfect. So, like first, yeah, starting out with the disease, lupus itself, as you know, is a, as you mentioned, oh. is a, a terrible disease, and it affects you know half a million to 1.5 million Americans actually. Lupus nephritis is the inflammation of the kidney. It's the most severe type, and basically, what happens if left untreated, or if it doesn't, you don't get a patient into remission. What happens is those patients go on to develop end-stage renal disease, their kidneys stop functioning, they need dialysis, and they need transplantation. And so whatever we could do to actually treat that and prevent that from happening, but the real issue is with this disease is that it takes their lives away from them. These patients, they lose their ability to work, they often can't have families, uh, they, they lose relationships. It's devastating both economically, uh, like physically, mm -hmm. uh, and emotionally. Now, g give your history, because in fact, I understand you had a, a role in whatever is out there right now. You you helped develop. So I, I was co-founder of a company called Aspriva, and Aspriva was a, a company focused on rare diseases in the early days of rare diseases. Mm -hmm. And we focused and we developed the standard of care for treating lupus patients, which was Celsept. Now, Celsept was an exciting drug, and we were excited by our data, but we only had about a 10% complete remission rate in patients with lupus nephritis. With our drug, Vacosporin now, layered over Celsept, we're getting about a 50% complete remission rate in patients. So five times what is current standard of care? It's, 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 it's like day or night. Wow. Okay, now, um, you have a page in your presentation which talks about, and it's actually quite daunting, um, recently completed clinical trials in this particular disease failed, 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 stop, failed, stop, failed. I mean, this, what is so hard about this? Well, you know, I, I think probably, to a large extent, some of those drugs probably do have some efficacy, but I think clinical trial design is critical in this area. Okay. Experience it at how to best design a trial to optimize results. I think a lot of, particularly, let's say, if you're studying lupus, it's a real issue because there aren't good endpoints. But at least in lupus nephritis, when you're looking at proteinuria or protein in the urine, right. if you could drop the protein in the urine down to normal level, mm -hmm. that has a big implication for patients. It makes it easier to study and easier to eventually to get regulatory approval for. Okay, and I want to mention that it's also... It Europe and Japan, right? This is very, you know, they may not be able to have the pricing that you get in the United States, but this is very important. Yeah, the study, you know, the studies are global, and this is a disease, you're right, it's, it's a worldwide. In fact, it's often worse in, in, in Asian countries and as well. Now, um, can you tell me the difference between um, what you did with the phase two and what's Aurora versus Aura? Aurora, because I yeah. just, I you know, was a little confused about Okay, that. so our phase two clinical study, as you know, resulted in, res in those results. We had 50% right. remission. It was the first time that a study's ever been done in lupus nephritis where you had all the primary endpoints, all the secondary endpoints met, all right? Okay. And we looked at that. At week 48, uh, we had a, point, a, a p value of less than 0.001. Now, what does that mean? It, it means that statistically, it was like one in a child thousand chance that, that happened by. by by right. fluke. Right. And so, very strong, sickest patients ever studied uh, to date in lupus nephritis were in our trial. Uh, and the Aurora th the Phase 3 clinical program is virtually identical to the Phase 2. So, all we okay. want to do is reproduce what we did effectively the first time. Now, you were enrolling uh, in the spring, and so right now is really kind of when things are really getting We've going, been busy. Right? We've got sites going up. We're looking at 200 sites around the world that we're setting up for this trial. We have 320 patients we're going to put into this trial. We're hoping to finish the trial by the end of 2019 and have re Hopefully, if, the, if we could reproduce those results, we think it's strong enough for regulatory approval in 2020. Okay, now you raised enough money to make it so you can get through to that period, right? Because that's, a, you know, you're talking about a couple years. We did. We've got about $200 million on our balance sheet, okay. so we're not looking for money in the marketplace. And so we have enough to carry ourselves right through 2020. Now, um, we had a piece, I don't know if you saw this week, on Outer Bio, 
which was a company that I had great hopes for, uh, for migraine sufferers. And it looks like they had some good results, but some people were, you understand that we, this, you bit of a, a kind of a binary uh, yeah. with, with this company. How do we, de how do people at home deal with the notion that it could be a binary situation? Yeah. I guess why I, I look at it and I, I'll speak for myself. I think Number one, these are speculative stocks. Right, thank they you. Are. Thank you for saying that. That's why I didn't and, and, appreciate that. And I think that's, uh, that's a reality. And I think people, when they make a decision, they should do their homework right. uh, and make a decision to invest. Uh, and they should really understand the diseases they're investing in and the program they're investing in and the quality of the management they're investing in. I think we have an excellent opportunity to get ahead of us, right? There's no guarantees. But I think when you look at a risk profile, right. I think we look pretty good. And I would soon presume that uh, you also have, um, well, there was a Merck drug that you have for animal health, but that's still the same kind of form formulation, right? Actually, it's very different, actually. But do we... I want to include that in the thinking, or is that just something that I'm trying to do as, you know, a, as, a, as a blanket to make me feel better? I think you have, it, your question is a really important one that you didn't actually ask, which right. is really like what comes next almost. What exactly. else you got there, right? Exactly. So really, in our, in our programs right now, we're looking very heavily at the new indications for our okay. drug. This, Lupus and is just a single indication. In the fall, we're going to have a research day. We'll be announcing some of the new indications. Right, well, I, I, want you to, dry eye. I want you to stay up, stay up with us because I know on the binary situations, people get very excited. But I'm um, thank you for saying what you did about speculative. So I, I feel like that outer was my, on my, my shoulders. And you really explained this one very, very well. And I thank you. Thank you, doctor. That's Richard Glickman. He's the chairman and CEO of Arinia Pharmaceuticals. Man, money's back to the break. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.